So now we have Orhan who's going to tell us about Ratatouille Terminal UI. Yep. Ah. Hello. Oh, okay, it's working. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for being here for my talk and coming to this presentation. Before starting out, we are already starting out a bit late, but I would like to ask you some questions. First of all, how many of you know what a terminal user interface is? Can I see hands, please? <laughs> That's great. And how many of you built terminal user interfaces before? Anything, just you know, in the terminal, some inter interface. Cool. The whole audience. Um, that's great. I am Orun Parmaxis, and today, in a few minutes, we're going to explore the fascinating world of terminal user interfaces and see how we can build terminal user interfaces in Rust with a library called Ratatouille. I'm an open source developer, and you can find me on GitHub with the handle Orhun, which is also my name. And I built the following projects, and you might know me from Gitcliff, it's a change of generators tool. And I mostly work with command line tools using Rust, and I pretty much live in the terminal, I would say. And that's why in my free time, I package some Rust tools for some Linux distributions, mainly Arch Linux and Alpine Linux. So let's learn a bit more about terminals, right, before jumping into the user interfaces. What is a terminal and how does it work? I want to show you some terminal pictures. Well, this is not looking like the typical terminal that we use these days. Um, this is IBM 2741. And this is one of the early user ter terminals that we had back in the day. And this was used for something called telegraphy. It's like a long distance transmission of messages. And this is also called a teleprinter or a teletypewriter. Shortly, we call this TTY. Let's keep that in mind because it will come important later in the slides. Next, we have VT100. Now we have video. Uh, we have a video display unit, and we display some information on a screen rather than printing text on uh, to a paper. That's cool. And VT100 was one of the widely used terminals back, th back then. And maybe there are people in the audience who use this. I would highly respect that, actually. Next, we have a text terminal, or just a terminal. Sometimes we call it a text console. And it's a sailor computer interface for text entry and display. And in the screenshot, you can see NeoVim, uh, my preferred text editor. Uh, and I'm some editing some package file. And yeah, this is uh, how we, like, we can just imagine terminals these days, because there's some text input. Then we process something. We see the output there. And just to summarize things a bit more, we can say that we can just you know have this diagram here. It's a POSIX schema of C standards like uh, streams, and you can see here there is a text terminal. We get the input from a keyboard, we process it, then we display something uh, on a display or screen with a STDR or STDR. Well, this looks pretty simple, right? But under the hood, things are a bit more complicated. There's a nice blog post about how terminals work, and if you want to like learn more about these, you can go check it. Uh, definitely check it out and um, learn more about it. But just to um, give you a, a couple of uh, ideas here, I, I want to point out uh, TTY, which I mentioned in the first slides, and also PTY. Um, TTY here is used for like a serial interface to a computer. Whereas PTY is an emulated TTY, which enables us to emulate multiple terminal user terminal interfaces to a computer. Well, you might ask, what, what does that mean? I'll give you a very simple example. Uh, let's say you want to have like multiple terminal emulators open, right? You want to have them side by side. You have to have, uh, you, you want to have like multiple sessions. In that case, uh, you will have multiple PTYs basically. So uh, let's. Uh, keep that in mind and move on. If you want to see the current TTY that you are on for some specific terminal, you can run TTY command. And you can see here, I am on the fifth TTY here. And also, you can see the same from the um, PS output as well. So these things we can access from 
Linux and get some information about. Just to wrap things up, Terminal is a physical device with a keyboard and a screen connected to a computer. TTY is, it was used for, uh, for a device, like for type messages, but now we use it for, for a term which describes the interface to a um, computer. PTY is, a, is an emulated TTY. That's cool. But we only talked about text for now. Like we, we, we want to have some text on our terminals, right? Well, in, in reality, we want to have more things like colors and like styling and then like cursor controls and everything. How do we do that? Like we, we don't want to just have text and, and we cannot really leave it this. So let's say we want to have this exact text in our terminal. What do we do? We do this. Um, this is very gibberish looking at first glance, but there's actually some magic going on here. And VT100, the second thermal image that I showed, was one of the thermals which was able to do this. We call this uh, NC escape sequences. Here are two examples. First, we have this example where, where we set the foreground color of some text, and then we can also set the background color. We can also do more stuff, such as controlling the cursor, um, setting the graphics mode, um, like the screen, screen mode and stuff. And something that I want to uh, also point out is that NC escape codes works like a session. So what does that mean? You set something, some terminal attribute, that is set for the remaining session of the terminal. So if you set your foreground color to white, the text, the remaining text, remaining output will be white. If you do something, then it will just stay. So it, thermal simply has a state. To get, the, uh, get more information about the thermal state on Linux, you can use this st sttty command. And here I just get the state, I uh, set something, and then I can just revert to the original state of the thermal. And then uh, if you mess up your thermal output, you can just use the reset command to reset the defaults. OK, now we know what a thermal is how to control it in a very basic way. Uh, now we are ready to talk about thermal user interfaces. In the, um, in the realm of thermal user interfaces, we use ANSI escape codes a lot to control the terminal. And also we, um, we want to output some like uh, styled text to it and then uh, have some mouse controls, uh, read like input handle events. And we basically build a loop around this and form a UI. Let's look at some examples. We talk about too much about thermal user interface interfaces, but how does that look, right? Well, we have HTOP here. I'm pretty much sure everyone, like most of you know this tool. Uh, it's an interactive process viewer. You can see the running processes. And it's a good example of a TUI, actually, because we have some gauge and some list and then you know some style text going on here. What you can also see from this screenshot is that we need to get a bit creative when it comes to building thermal user interfaces because we don't have the typical building blocks for uh, you know, having some UI. We, we need to use symbols for blocks. We need to um, have these uh, pipe characters to you know, form some kind of a UI. So that's, uh, that's one of the good examples of a TUI, I would say. There are also a lot of, uh, a lot of use cases of TUIs. Um, HTOP is a system admi administration tool, but we can also have like text editors, file managers, miscellaneous stuff, multimedia, even games, which I will talk about today, and even more stuff. So they are good for productivity and efficiency. One might argue that what's the difference between this and this, right? Th this is a file explorer, which runs on a GUI, and this is another uh, file explorer, which is on Terminal. Well, you can pretty much do the same thing in both of them. Like, what's the difference, apart from the light theme? Um, well, at the end of the day, you can do, you can choose whatever you want, but there, they both have some advantages, and it's good to consider the advantages of TUI when it comes to working with thermals and uh, if you want to like have some uh, efficiency in your workflow. I want to go over them briefly. Uh, first of all, TUIs are very resource efficient. They consume fewer system resources, and they are very suitable for resource-constrained environments. 
And you can navigate faster in Twist because you're on a terminal and you have some shortcuts and command input inputs. And um, if you if you like, uh, let's say you want to connect to a server, right, Pro, uh, via SSH, and you don't have X11 or Wayland in that server, you just have uh, ATTY basically. In that case, TUIs are good because they have text-only displays. You don't have to uh, be, uh, you don't have have to have a a display server running. So you can simply so SSH into that server and run some TUI, and that's why you know, they, they can be accessed with uh, like a over a network connection as well. When it comes to GUIs, they are also like pretty, pretty advantageous in some cases. If you want to have like a very user-friendly interface, GUIs are good because they have an intuitive uh, interface for new or casual users. They have uh, user interaction enhancing features such as drag and drop. And there's something called what you see is what you get, which means that in GUIs, you have more immediate and visual representation of your changes, which is also good for new users or someone who is not really uh, into computers, I would say. So I asked the Ratatouille community and also in my socials, like, what's your top picks when it comes to Tui applications? And these are the answers that I got. We have a couple of text editors here. We have some development tools, also some cool stuff such as Outwin. We have the maintainer here. Shout out to her. Um, we have like uh, some process management stuff as well. So people like TUIs. And I would like to ask you a question here as well. What's your favorite TUI? Uh, does in, do anyone like, want to say? What? B top. B top. Good one. What FCF. else? FCF. Is FCF. Cool one. Yeah. Last one? Helix. Helix. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, TUIs are very popular when it comes to development uh, utilities, I would say. So, yeah. Next, I want to pay tribute here and uh, mention some of the legendary legacy software that helped us come this far when it comes to building TUIs. Starting off with the MS DOS editor. I see some smiles. Um, the OG edit.com. Uh, in 90s, this, these type of stuff were very popular. And I especially like the aesthetics of this because you have some drop shadows there. It, it looks very bad, but also really good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you have like colors and mouse support and everything. So truly a masterpiece. We have Borland Turbo C++. Um, this was very powerful back in the day. And this was very language specific, but it's really um, it's a really nice example of a tweet that were used uh, in the old days. I mean, heck, we even have syntax highlighting in there. So, shout out to them. I'll skip the slide. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have um, we have Midnight Commander, um, an Orthodox file manager. There are also a lot of other file manager. Uh, tweets as well, but I picked Midnight Commander here because it's uh, widely known. It has a wiki page. That's actually the reason why I picked it. Um, this is one of my favorite IRC clients, and I honestly added this slide because I like the visuals and the aesthetics. So, yeah. Well, they all look very, very old, right? And they're old stuff. And every desktop and laptop runs on a graphical OS these days. So, should we still care about tweets? Well, another example that I will, give, I will give here is that um, is about re reduced resource consumption. We don't have bloat in TUIs, basically. Turbo C++ was 9 megabytes, Helix is 16 megabytes, and VS Code is 350 megabytes. So you make the math. And yeah, VS Code will eat your computer for lunch due to Electron. Rip. OK, let's talk about how to build those magnificent apps. and. Let's uh, talk about the other three libraries before moving on to Rust. We have Ncursus here. Ncursus is one of the most popular three libraries and most known ones. And um, it's, it's for C, and uh, you can just build tweets with using this. And I want to uh, point out one thing here. This refresh call 
is actually uh, a performance trick. So if you like, if you want to uh, have some performance benefits, you you don't like call this refresh because your updates won't be rendered. So until you call refresh, your your um, UI changes will will pan pan for a moment. So we have like uh, the, these small tricks when it comes to building TUIs, and these uh, stuff actually improves performance and you know offers great flexibility. You have CDK. Um, the reason why this exists is because N curses doing N doing stuff in N curses is pretty difficult, and if you want to like complex uh, uh, UI, then it's really not possible and very difficult to have it in N curses. So people created Curses Development Kit, and this provides some widgets, uh, such as you know dialogues and calendars and whatnot. And Curses versus CDK will come later as an important point, so let's keep that in mind. If you run the N Curses code that I showed you, you will get this, uh, this text on your terminal, and this is very boring. So we can take things up a notch. This is dialog, uh, a very small command line utility on Linux, and you can show dialogs like this. I added this because it's, it can be counted as a tweet as well. You have drop shadows, you have this thing. And yeah, let's press enter to this and take things up a notch. We have textualize in our hands. It's a Python framework for building trees. We have the tool Dolphy here. It's a tree for monitoring uh, MySQL in real time. It's pretty cool, and textualize can also run in browser. We have Bubble T, uh, a Go framework based, based on the Elm architecture. And now Go is mentioned. Let's talk about Rust, right? The moment that everyone was waiting for. In Rust, we have Tui RS, created by Florian in 2016. And it was maintained till 2022. And there, th this library is um, one of the most like used uh, it was one of the most used libraries in the Rust ecosystem, and then it was unmaintained after some point. And 2023, we created a community around it. We forked the project and we uh, rebranded as Ratatouille. And now Ratatouille is the most used TUI framework in Rust. And you can have like these complex stuff in in Ratatouille as well. And I will briefly mention this, and I will give you a demo of how to build apps in Ratatouille. Just to give you a, a, a bit more about the history of the project, first, we, uh, first there was a discussion about the uh, maintenance of 2RS. Then in the discussion, uh, it was not really leading anywhere. Uh, so me and a couple of other interested people, we created a Discord server. We, were, we talked about the possibility of forking the project. And we let the maintainer know about this. And we forked the project under the name of 2ERS Revival. We had some meetings at the time, and then after some point, uh, the maintainer was not really able to respond to us. He was probably too busy. And then we created some, uh, we started to create some versions and, um, you know, continued development. Someone came up with the, the coolest name ever, Ratatouille. Someone made the logo, which I have stickers for here, if you want to have it after the talk, for sure. Um, and then you know we created some releases, and after some point, Florian uh, archived the 2RS repository and just redirected redirected people to us, and that's when your 2RS uh, sorry Ratatouille became the official successor. And today, actually yesterday, we just created a new release. We have uh, pretty cool stuff. Definitely check that out. And I also wrote a couple of blog posts about the history of the uh, of, of Ratatouille. So you can read them on my blog. When it comes to building TUIs, we have a lot of options. We have Textualize, we have Bubble Tea, but why Rust is very important for us. I want to briefly mention a couple of points. First, memory safety. I'm uh, pretty sure everyone is like familiar with this, but Rust's ownership system ensures memory safety, and uh, it also eliminates security issues related to memory. Uh, security memory issues, and um, we have like a very performant language in our hands. We have like zero cost abstractions, and low level controls. They allow you for us to build highly performant trees. And yeah, cross platform support is great. We have great portability features when it comes to uh, you know doing stuff in Rust. 
unless the cargo is just great and we have a growing ec ecosystem of three libraries so if you want to like have some uh, if you want to have widgets that are not supported like not in the rota three organization people created a very cool uh, third party widgets that you can just use in your uh, three apps here's a demo of rota three I'll give a water break while we watch this This was made for the 1,000 comets. We just made this for celebrating. And here you can see pixels are moved around to create this fadeaway effect. Rotatui is very lightweight, customizable, flexible, and it's a, it has a very cool name. <laughs> so it is pretty much designed for developers and enthusiasts who want a lightweight alternative to graphical user interfaces. And if you want to have a, like an app deployed in a constrained environment, like a server with limited resources, Ratatouille is for you. And if you want to have, like a pre, uh, have a full control over the terminal and you know, have more like a customized and tailored experience, uh, definitely consider choosing Ratatouille. And if you just appreciate the retro aesthetic of the terminal and the cool name, go for it. If you remember the N-Curses versus CDK example that I gave, um, here, you can see Thermal is handled by Ncurses and CDK is rendering the UI. In the case of Ratatouille, Thermal can be handled with a couple of backends. You can choose between those options. And Ratatouille is actually responsible for rendering some widgets, such as you know, these ones, like block and tab tabs and list. And when it comes to these backends, um, we have like three options. We do, do not really dictate which one you choose. They, they are all, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they just handle the terminal. But cross term is one of the popular options. It's a pure Rust uh, terminal manipulation library, and it supports uh, like the all of the pl platforms basically. Here's a cool diagram about which uh, backend uh, you can choose. Like I said, it does not really influence your, you know. It's, if you go with like term is instead of cross term, it it's does not really have an influence on your project structure because the core functionalities of the terminal handling stays the same. Yeah, here comes the exciting exciting part. Um, I will show you how to build a tree with using Rata tree very quickly. We have a lot of tutorials on our website, so if you go to ratatree.rs, you can find a JSON editor application tutorial. We have a counter app uh, and a bunch of other cool documentation about trees and uh, specifically Rata tree, so definitely go check that out if you're interested. First, we start with creating a new project. And um, first, yeah, you, you need to check your Rust version. Um, and then in the uh, project structure, uh, you can see, you know, it's a very simple project, but I'll just give a brief introduction. Cargo Tumble is where you have your dependencies, and under SRC main, that's where you will have your code. Next, we can use the cargo add command to add Ratatouille and your preferred uh, backend to our project. In our case, I run the cargo add Ratatouille and cross term, and you can see in cargo tumble we have the dependencies added. The versions might vary based on the time that you're watching this presentation. And next, we can go ahead and add some imports to our main file. Uh, from cross term, I imported some terminal handling types and uh, methods and types and you know traits. And from Ratatouille, I imported some um, some widgets and also Prelude. Prelude is a module which re-exports the most used types and traits and really simpl simplifies the imports in our case. And uh, before going into you know rendering anything, we need to actually set up the terminal and restore it. So in the in this uh, code, you can see I entered something called an alternate screen and enable something called raw mode. Well, um, alternate screen is something like a new buffer in your terminal. So if you run your TUI app, you want to switch to a new screen and have like a, like a clear page where you can render stuff. And raw mode, we also call this cooked mode. In, the, in, the, in this mode, you basically cook. And you just switch to it just to have more, like the full control over the terminal. In this mode, the IO is turned off and you just have to handle your stuff yourself. And before exiting, uh, like the, when you exit, you have to restore the terminal because you don't want to mess up your output. In this 
GIF, you can see that uh, first I will run some TUI with alternate screen. And the text is printed there. And when, when I quit, this uh, cursor is back to its where it's at. And if I run the same demo with, uh, without alternate screen, you will see that the whole TUI is printed to the terminal as is without switching to a new buffer. And the cursor is shifted down. So alternate screen helps us to have a, like a clear state when, uh, when uh, clear slate when you want to you know, have, uh, you, you want to render some uh, widgets. And the most important part when it comes to building TUIs is the render loop. First, you need to draw the UI. In this case, uh, you can use the terminal, terminal's uh, draw method, which takes a frame, uh, and it's a, it's a closure, and it render, renders the entire screen. Here, I just uh, have this paragraph widget, and I render some text. Next, I need to handle some events. In this case, I am pulling some events from cross term, and then if Q is pressed, I just break from the loop. And the reason why we have 16 milliseconds here is that 16 milliseconds is roughly 60 FPS. So we have to wait a bit uh, just to make sure that UI remains responsive, regardless of whether we have new events pending. This is the full code. This might look a lot uh, for just a Hello World application, but we, will, uh, we, we are aiming to simplify this further. If you run it, you will simply see a Hello World to you, and yeah. That's how you build TUIs. You might ask what happens in case of errors. Well, um, in case of errors, you might, um, you might guess that the rest restore stuff that we added, like the leave and alternate screen, won't be called. So you will pretty much mess up your terminal output. In that case, you can use some panic hooks. Uh, we have a couple of tutorials on how to do them. But here, I have the code for setting up a panic hook using better panic create and when you panic, like when you just unwrap something, for example, this will be called and you will restore your terminal. We have a couple of concepts. I will briefly talk about them just to further improve our understanding of how Rata T works. We have an area. Uh, the coordinate system runs from uh, left to right and top to bottom. We have the origin on the top left and x, y coordinates are represented by u16s. And this area, you just basically say that you want to render something in that area. And in this example, we uh, render a text, and we manually cal calculate the area to render within. We have a layout, and layouts used for if you want, like, if you want, like uh, for example, uh, split your area into two, like this, and uh, have um, like render different things on these different areas. You can do that. You can also like have like nested layouts and such as well. You might uh, you might uh, solve the you, you might have seen the um, the constraints in the last slide. Constraints helps us to um, you know have a better control in the layouts. For example, in this example, I want to have a first. I want to create an area of ten characters. Then I want the next area to be seventy percent of the remaining, and the last one will be uh, the like the remaining uh, area, but just not not bigger than five characters. And yeah, we have a good uh, flex demo we recently added to our repo for demonst demonstrating how to uh, use those constraints. In the world of UI development, there are two concepts uh, when it comes to rendering. And first one is retain mode rendering, where you have your widgets and states, and you just update states to render something. And we have immediate mode rendering, which we don't have states, and we just uh, redraw everything on every frame, and Rotati uses immediate mode rendering approach. You can see here is that in every loop, in every draw call, in this F, uh, in this uh, closure, everything is rendered. Uh, this sounds like a bad thing, but it's act actually a good thing because it gives us uh, some flexibility. For example, your UI logic becomes a uh, direct reflection of your application state. And also, if you want to, uh, let's say you want to hide a widget, then you just don't render it based on some condition. So it has those advantages. Uh, lastly, there are se several patterns that you can use with your three applications. I briefly mentioned the Alma architecture. Um, 
uh, we have another actually whole library uh, for building trees using uh, Elm architecture, and it's bas basically something like you define your metal models, handle updates, and render the view. We have a component architecture. There are two good Rust projects. Uh, you can check them out if you want to learn more about uh, how they structure their project. And also we have a templates repository, which we have a component architecture template as well. I will briefly mention that now. Um, we have a Flux design pattern. Uh, we can also use this Flux architecture in our apps. And um, we have a, another cool Rust project which uses this architecture. And the templates that we have, you can just use Cargo Generate to uh, clone, a, you know, choose between these templates and just, you know, bootstrap a Threaded 3 application very quickly. You, you can install Cargo Generate and run this uh, command to, you know, have a prompt where it asks you some questions like your project name, etc. And you can have one of these templates, like simple, simple async or component. It's, very, it's a good way to, you know, start out with um, having Threaded 3 projects, I would say. And lastly, showcase. Let's have a look at what people have built with Twitter 3. Uh, well, uh, I will show off some, some widgets first. We have paragraph, uh, we have a block, we have calendar, we have a chart, we have a table. Those are the maintainers, by the way. We have a bar chart. And if you want to have like more uh, stuff, we have some third party widgets. We have a Twitter 3 image uh, widget where you can just use to uh, render some images on the terminal. There's also a couple of other ways for rendering images. In this case, someone uh, actually shared the snippet on our Discord. They used the uh, colored pixels to show some image, and this is also possible. Very bad code, by the way. Anyways, um, uh, the, here's an album cover of Kendrick Lamar. Um, we have a pseudo terminal widget, free term. If, you want, if you're building some uh, text editor and have some integrated terminal, this is for you. And we have other stuff as well. Go check them out for sure. And these are the stuff that people built. We have Pokédex here. Uh, it's a Pokédex tree. You can just you know browse Pokémon's, show off to your coworkers. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And this is something that I discovered yesterday. Actually, someone built a full-fledged game in Rota Tree, and you can just have this, you know, play this in your terminal. It's about space pirates playing basketball across the galaxy. <laughs> you just choose some planet when, when you start the game. You build your character, like the skin, whatever. You select your spaceship, and this is the main menu, you know, and you can just take a look at <coughs> stuff. I haven't played, I haven't played, sorry. Uh, so it's pretty cool. We have Altwin, pretty cool project. It replaces your existing shell history with SQLite database and a bunch of other cool features, shout out to them. And lastly, this is one of my favorite full stack projects. This is a website which was built with Trata3, which <laughs> you, with you framework, and it provides two aesthetic in the browser. The backend uses Axum and REST API, and it is a Mongo database. You can go to this blog to read more about how this blog was built, actually. So definitely check it out. We have other cool stuff uh, at Awesome Rata3 repository. Uh, you can go check those cool stuff as well. I'm running out of time, so I have to run a bit. So the feature, what we are going to do with Rata3, we are improving upon feedback. So definitely let us know if you have some feedback, if you tried Rata3 and if you think something sucks or anything, just let us know. Um, if you don't think anything sucks, then Consider sponsoring us. Meeting this goal will allow us to work Rota3 on more, maybe part-time or full-time one day. Thanks goes to all these wonderful people who contribute to Rota2. And we have a lot of contributors. And those are some stats. Um, and yeah, we're just happy to have you as well. If you want to you know, join our Discord, ask questions, or if, you, if you're interested in contributing, go for it. Thanks to our team, uh, which are building on building Rata3 right now, and thanks to Florian for creating 2RS in the first place, which make all of this possible. And lastly, if you like my open source efforts and you know my projects or anything, blog posts, uh, consider sponsoring me. Uh, let's hit that goal. Let's go. Thank you for your time and attention, and I hope you enjoyed.